presidency under fire, it kept the country talking for 13 months. There's still plenty to talk about. We're pleased to welcome former independent counsel Ken Starr, plus CNN anchor Wolf Blitzer, and in New York, CNN senior analyst Jeff Greenfield. As you looked at that piece, Judge Starr, what did you think? Well, it was a long build-up beginning in 1980 in the coverage of the presidency, and uh, we've now reached the, the stage where the, the media is, of course, the so om is so omnipresent. And it's very difficult, therefore, as we saw in some of the prior segments, for law to be carried on in that context. You told me in an interview the mistake you made was you should have gone public more during this. I think it would have helped. I think it would have been uh, helpful to tell the American people some of the basic facts about the investigation that the Attorney General authorized it and the like, and I chose not to do that. Uh, I followed the traditional rules, and, uh, and we live in a new age. Do you feel you lost? No. Don't. I, I don't. I really don't. Because we did our job, we gave our report to Congress, and then Congress uh, uh, did its uh, duty and came to the judgment that it came to. Impact of a non-stop media coverage, do you think, as you said, coming out of the House here again? <laughs> well, they were there all the time, and especially for a grand jury investigation, it is extremely difficult to carry that on, and especially when allegations are going to be made. Oh, gee, there's leaking of grand jury information uh, underway and the like. There are all kinds of complications, especially in a grand jury setting. And when the President of the United States is involved, it is a far better system for the Congress to step in at a much earlier stage uh, and to say, this is our show. And Wolf, does media have to do what it has to do? Does it have to go around the clock, right? Uh, in a story like this, we had no choice. This was a huge story. And, and of course, the presidency was on the line, and we had to cover it every little detail. Not only that, uh, everybody was watching. Let's not kid ourselves. The whole world was fascinated as much as we like to say you know this was so unpleasant and, and and the fact was it was unpleasant and we were ignoring all sorts of other stories and who knows if there would have been a, a war in Kosovo let's say if we would have been paying attention to what was going on in the Balkans but that's you know the future historians can d debate that but we had to cover this as thoroughly as we did we really had no choice. Jeff were we better off because of this are, are we better now informed through things like this? We're more informed, and I do think the record will show that, by and large, the press got most of the stories right. A lot of the controversy in the early days were about stories that turned out to be true. But if you contrast the rhythm of the press in this story from Watergate, it's astonishing, without trying to draw any parallels. When the evening news ended uh, in 1973, the next you heard about Watergate was your morning paper. There was no Larry King, no Nightline, no CNN, no Lear McNeil News Hour. And I'm not, I don't think we can really say that we're better because of the sheer volume of what we have. But the fact is, that sort of like arguing about rain in San Francisco on an autumn morning. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. There's no going back. What's the effect on the job you do, Ken? Well, I think it calls on the law officers to do the very best they can to say, look, our audience really is the judges, the, the jurors, and the like. Uh, and especially if you have a judge who is in control, who controls the courtroom, who uh, supervises the grand jury, then, then the system can work. But it's very hard. It's very hard on everyone involved in the system with that kind of, as Jeff is saying, that kind of intense after-hours coverage so that it becomes an echo chamber. Do you ever think, do you ever say to yourself, maybe we went too far here or All we led with a room? You deal with it every day, right? Well, I, I thought about it every single day for 13 months. I was saying to myself, you know, I, I don't know what, what I'm doing. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm on the, the north lawn of the White House, and I'm talking about the definition of sexual relations as President Clinton understood that term. And what does it mean? What doesn't it mean? I, I never thought I'd be doing that. Jeff, why didn't the public react the way the media reacted. The public retained their... they liked them. I'm going to give you my theory and people may not like it. I think it shows the disconnection between the public and politics. I think many people, particularly journalists, who I know a lot of people think are hopelessly liberal, thought, and let's forget for a minute, perjury and all the legal stuff. What the president did, the behavior, was seen by a lot of people inside Washington as a fall from a standard. I think a lot of the folks in America by 1998 had decided there was no standard from which a politician could fall. <laughs> that politi I'm quite serious. That they were so irredeemably bad that for the president to engage in conduct which a generation ago would have gotten him out of office in about 12 hours, it was like, well, you know, I've seen it on Oprah, I've seen it on Springer, I've seen it on the soaps. What's the big deal? And I really think that that was one of the big protections the president had, apart from his job approval rating, and I must say the mis 
the, the, the miscalculation of the independent counsel's office and the Republicans was that they thought, so what? It's a kind of sad commentary. Any regrets over doing it? No, I, it had to be done. Do uh, it again. Uh, well, I would not want to do, do it, it, but yeah. You yeah. would take the job again if it came up again. Uh, well, you tempt me uh, to say <laughs> no. But yeah, I've, I've always said yes to public service. Thanks, Ken. Hey, thank you, Larry. Wolf and Jeff will be back with us before the end of the show. Don't go away. We've got more talk and more unforgettable memories.